Alright guys, so today I'm going to be doing my first review and I'm going to be doing it on the Tunic Tower 120 Extreme CPU Cooler. Now as you can see on the front of the box, we have some features listed. Um, some of them are uh, support for the LGA1156 socket from Intel. Um, and the uh, cooler is based on Tunic's core contact technology. And also there is the TX3 thermal paste that is included and a MFDB fan, which is uh, a magnetic fluid dynamic bearing fan. And on the side of the box, you will see some other specifications on the cooler itself, the size, and some information on the fan and the thermal grease. On the back, we have some more features and uh, other specs, uh, basically standard box information. So at the top, um, you can see this handle, and it's actually a pretty nice handle, which is kind of a strange thing to say, but um, it's a good feature on a box, I guess. So opening the box here, and it's taking me quite a long time. So here we see another blank black box, which is pretty nice. The, it's double boxed. And inside this box, we will find a small white box, which contains some accessories. And also the cooler itself, and inside is a manual and some packing styrofoam. So we'll leave this cooler to the side and uh, just check out the accessories box first, which I assume contains some mounting hardware and such. Yep. So this is the back plate, I think, for the Intel mounting systems. Um, so socket 775, uh, 1156, and 1366 will all be using this backplate from Intel. Um, so nice of Tunic to give us a backplate that is usable for all three of those sockets. And inside... Um, the styrofoam we will find AMD mounting hardware and I believe you'll have to switch out some of the hardware on the actual cooler itself to install here are some of the screws and nuts and whatnot that you would need to install onto a AM2 and AM3 socket then there's a single screw which um, is probably for mounting this fan controller. Now the fan that comes on the cooler itself is not a PWM controlled fan, so um, Tunic has included this expansion bracket fan controller for you, which is pretty nicely designed. And I'm assuming that screw is probably to mount this um, fan controller. So, we also have a bag of Intel mounting hardware, um, which goes with the back plate that we saw in the beginning. And there are a bunch of screws and washers, whatnot, um, to mount the cooler. And we see a tube of the Tunic TX3 thermal compound. Um, this tube is pretty small, it's like shorter than half of, or maybe even a third of my finger, and uh, it's probably even less in there. Anyways, that's the uh, end of the accessories box section. So let me just put this all aside, and we'll check out the cooler itself. Now the cooler is contained in plast a plastic clamshell, which is, um, it's the nice kind, which is simple to open. It just clicks open, or snaps open. 
and this comp shell is pretty well designed for protection because it has like a border around it which protects it from any transportation damage that you might get so let me just try and get it out here put those aside so here's the cooler itself as you can see it's pretty uh, massive and it's got a really nice black finish and lots of fins and if we can get uh, see through here you can see the fan inside and all those fins and uh, the fan is in the middle of the fins as you could probably see from before and it is removable but I'm not sure if it's interchangeable um, I don't believe it is because it's probably uh, it's designed specifically to fit here and there's that three pin fan header that we were talking about or fan connector um, that would be controlled by the PCI or expansion slot fan controller here's the core contact technology base um, there are actually um, five heat pipes with three of them I believe uh, that are eight millimeters wide and two of them that are six millimeters wide um, yeah that should be right so these will direct be directly in contact with your CPU providing good heat transfer throughout the fins of the cooler and that's pretty much it I think um, there you see some the mounting hardware that's already on the cooler and that's about it so I've tested the cooler with the specs uh, that you see there and with Linux I got uh, low temperatures of 43 degrees Celsius when I was using uh, it, the cooler at the lowest fan speed and at the highest fan speed I got low temperatures of 41 degrees Celsius so this cooler did a pretty amazing job at keeping my CPU cool even while it was uh, overclocked to 3.33 gigahertz